All right, good afternoon. Uh, the Secretary General will speak at the opening um, of the 73rd session of the General Assembly this afternoon. He is expected to tell member states that we will have a busy session ahead of us. He will say that we need action for peacekeeping, financing for the 2030 agenda, empowerment for the world's young people, urgent steps to end poverty, conflict, and much else. The Secretary General will encourage the ambassadors to tell their leaders to come to next week's high-level week ready to be bold, ready to cooperate, and ready to forge solutions. Earlier, he laid a wreath in, the memorial, uh, in memory of the late Secretary General Doug Hammarskjöld and those who perished with him 57 years ago. He reinforced his personal commitment to the investigations into the conditions and circumstances relating to the tragic death of Doug Hammarskjöld and other colleagues and crew. The Secretary General also renewed his strongest appeal for the cooperation of all member states that may hold information and records that are relevant to the investigation. And as we prepare for the plenary session of the 73rd GA, I wanted to share with you some facts and figures for the upcoming events. Right now, in advance of the plenary session, we have confirmations that 88 heads of states, 45 heads of government are to attend the session, which is up from 77 heads of state and 37 heads of government last year. Regarding other events, as of today, the Department for General Assembly and Conference Management has received 342 requests for meetings during the high-level week. Compared for the same time last year, it received 343. And as of today, our colleagues have received a total of 741 requests for bilateral meetings amongst member states, and this number will increase uh, during next week. And we will have a better idea of the number of bilaterals the Secretary General himself will have uh, later um, in the week. Uh, and the first member state uh, to be seated on the left in the front row of the General Assembly will be Mali, with other member states seated in alphabetical order after that. And as you will have seen, we issued a few moments ago a statement uh, on uh, Syria in which the Secretary General said he welcomes the agreement reached on September 17th between President Erdogan of Turkey and President Putin of Russia to create a demilitarized zone in Idlib region which should avert a full-scale military cooperation and provide reprieve for millions of civilians. The Secretary General calls on the parties in Syria to cooperate with the implementation of the agreement and to ensure safe and unimpeded humanitarian access in all areas through the most direct routes. The Secretary General stresses the need for swift action to address the root causes of the conflict and forge at long last a durable solution in line with Security Council Resolution 2254. Um, and that statement is available to you online. Of course, also on Syria, you will see, you will see there is an ongoing meeting in the Security Council during which Stefan Dimistor, the Secretary General Special Envoy for Syria, briefed the Council and he expressed his hope that the agreement in, uh, that was agreed to in, uh, so in, uh, in Sochi is expeditiously implemented with full respect for international humanitarian law and sustained humanitarian access with respect for the sovereignty, independence, unity, and territorial integrity of Syria and with continued preference for dialogue over escalation in addressing a complex situation. He added that just as we are seeing the crisis in Idlib averted, we are seeing worrying escalation elsewhere. This week, he said fresh airstrikes were reported in Damascus and that the Syrian government attributes to Israel. Israel has not commented, said Mr. Dimistora. And overnight, the special envoy added a Russian military aircraft was down, killing 15 servicemen. Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lowcock told the council that across much of the country, the situation is now calmer than it was when he had visited in January, but humanitarian needs remain substantial, he added, and that the government expressed concern to him about the underfunding of the UN's humanitarian response plan last year. Mr. Lowcock added that to succeed uh, in Idlib, demilitarization requires the agreement of all parties Short of such an agreement, he said, it is foreseeable that force will be used to demilitarize and the civilians exposed to the very harm we are trying to avoid. Uh, both Mr. Dimistro and Mr. Lokak will speak uh, at the stakeout, I would have guessed probably in about 20 minutes. 
but we'll let you know. Uh, on the Philippines, uh, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that Typhoon Mankut, which made landfall in the country on September 15th, affected 893,000 people, including over 280,000 farmers. Some 236,000 people were displaced, 70% of whom are still in evacuation uh, centers. The typhoon has damaged, uh, has damaged, was dam damaged nearly 1,500 houses. It also uh, estimated that uh, 1.20, 1. 1. Uh, 1.22 million hectares of rice, corn have been damaged, with losses estimated at $267 million. The UN and its partners are working closely with the government to cooperate, to coordinate rapid assessment and response. Major needs include food, health care, water, sanitation, hygiene, as well as shelter. And we, of course, stand ready uh, to support the government's relief efforts as needed. And on Nigeria, we are told that over the past two weeks, floods caused by heavy rains have impacted at least 12 states in the country, with areas located around the Niger and Benu rivers are at particular risk. Yesterday, the government of Nigeria declared a national disaster in four states. The United Nations and humanitarian partners are supporting the government-led rapid assessment and response, including through coordination, information management, and reporting. And you will see last night the Secretary General uh, welcomed the meeting between President uh, Gwele of Djibouti and Pre President Afwerki of Eritrea that was held on September 17th in Jeddah under the auspices of His Majesty King Salman uh, of Saudi Arabia. In a statement, the Secretary General expressed his hope that the encounter would initiate a process to settle all pending issues between the two countries and lead to greater peace, stability, and development in the region. And you will have seen the um, World Health Organization presented its findings on the 2018 Global TB report a bit earlier today. That's more information online. Also on um, child uh, mortality, an estimated 6.3 million children under the age of 15 died in 2017, mostly of preventable causes according to new mortality estimates released by UNICEF, the World Health Organization, the UN Populations. Uh, division and the World Bank group. Globally in 2017, half of those deaths under five years of age took place in sub-Saharan Africa, another 30% in southern Asia. They note, the report notes that while the world has made remarkable progress to save children since 1990, millions are still dying because of who they are and where they are born, a reality that can be changed with simple solutions like medicine, clean water, electricity, and vaccines. Um, and as every new uh, General Assembly season starts, is also a season of young journalists, which we are we see in the room, and we welcome all of you. Uh, I know we have journalists on the Riyam Al Farah Memorial Journalism Fellowship. The fellowship is in, which is organized by the Department of Public Information, is a unique opportunity for young journalists from developing countries and countries with econ economies in transition to cover the UN. As you know, the program is named for Riyam al a 29-year-old uh, Jordanian public information officer who was one of our colleagues who was killed uh, during the terrorist attack in the Bag uh, that targeted the Bag UN headquarters in Baghdad on August 19, 2003. And the other batch of journalists who are also young, uh, there are four of them, are from the Dag Hammarskjöld Fellows Program. Uh, the Dag Hammarskjöld Fund for Journalists, uh, which is not affiliated with the UN but run by the UN correspondents here, is dedicated to the advancement of fuller understanding of the United Nations, and it supports uh, it is there to support and promote journalism in developing countries of Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean. We welcome all of you. Uh, we hopefully will welcome your questions as well. And um, as I mentioned, uh, as you know, Lise Kingo, the CEO and Executive Director of the UN Global Compact will be here after we are done, and she will share highlights of the 2018 UN Global Compact Progress Report and the upcoming UN Global Compact Leaders Summit. And tomorrow at the noon briefing, we will have as our guest Santiago Villalpando uh, for the annual briefing on the treaties uh, that will be signed uh, during the uh, General Assembly. Uh, Santiago is the head of the treaty section in OLA, and he will be joined by Adama Dieng, the special advisor on the prevention of genocide, and they will brief you uh, uh, on the treaty event and the appeal for universal ratification of the Genocide Convention. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, 
Do you have any comments on uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's uh, speech that he plans to give uh, Pakistani citizenship to the uh, Pakistan-born Afghan uh, children of Afghan refugees who have been there since 1979? Well, you know, we, we have to see detail of the proposal, but I think it would be uh, a welcome choice given to um, to Afghan refugees uh, who have been far from home and give them the option to be resettled and absorbed in a country, sometimes for these children, the only country they've actually known. Thank you. So on Guatemala, the government has written to the SG asking for a new head for the Commission of Inquiry. Uh, will the UN follow that request or are you going to keep supporting uh, Mr. Velasquez in uh, this role? I expect a bit more formal statement a bit later, but obviously we ha I can confirm we've received the letter and we're studying it carefully. Yes, Stefan. Uh, Although Kosovo is not a member state of the United Nations, given the fact that it's on the agenda of the Security Council every three months, and the General Assembly, and knowing that uh, Kosovo officials are here already in New York, will the Secretary General meet with President of Kosovo or Prime Minister of Kosovo or talk about the new round of negotiation here? Uh, I don't have the details of the Secretary General's bilaterals uh, as of yet, but I will uh, check for you. Also, if I may, since we had that discussion last week, uh, you, uh, uh, exp you actually explained, that, uh, quoting the UN, highest UN official, saying that the situation in Idlib, Idlib was described as the perfect storm. Now, using that metaphoric language, how would you describe, or the Secretary General would describe the recent uh, uh, agreement between the President Putin and Erdogan in Sochi. Well, I don't, you, you may is have, that hope you, for you, you, it? You, you may have missed it, but I read out a statement from the Secretary General at the top of the uh, briefing. I actually, I actually, I didn't see I wanted to uh, say, using that metaphoric language, would you explain it now? Hopeful, uh, prospective, uh, beginning of the end, or what? Look, uh, I, I think if anything. Uh, that the last seven and a half years of the conflict in Syria has taught us is to be realistic uh, and take things one day at a time. Uh, the Secretary General welcomes uh, the, the agreement, as did, of course, his, uh, his special envoy. Uh, the next step is obviously on the cooperation needed to implement uh, the agreement and keeping at the center of all of this the safety and well-being of civilians in Idlib. And the SG supports Astana? Uh, process? Yes, and the, so he's, he said that himself a few days ago. Thank you, Stefan. Can you first confirm there is a Security Council meeting next Tuesday to be chaired by President Trump on the Middle East or uh, any other subject? I'm not no, aware. The, the confirmation of uh, Security Council meetings is uh, best left to the member state that actually presides those meetings. So I would encourage you to... Uh, to check with the, with the US. Okay, my second question, I repeat the same question again and again. Israeli court decided to go ahead with the demolition of the village of Al Khan Al Ahmar, which will disconnect the northern part of West Bank and the southern part. And there was a very strong uh, statement from the European Union. However, the UN so far did not say anything except some few remarks. Well, I, I beg to differ, but there was a very direct uh, and I think very clear statement from Mr. Mladenov, who represents the Secretary General. Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Simon Atebat from Today News Africa in DC. Uh, you talked about some head of state and government who have been confirmed. How many of them uh, have confirmed that you will attend from Africa? And do you, can you tell us if the president of Nigeria, Cameroon, and the Sudanese leaders. We will have. Be there. Uh, and we have, lastly, the, sorry, go ahead. I, I can do that right afterwards. I'll show you the list we have. Yep. And lastly, uh, I don't know is the UN uh, ready to say something about the situation in Cameroon, where thousands of people have been killed and hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced? Well, we're obviously uh, following that situation very closely. We've been uh, concerned about it for some time. I think the Secretary General's envoys have called for a, a 
political and inclusive political dialogue to take place. Yes, sir. Good My afternoon. name is Solomon Seranja. Um, I work with NBS TV. I'm one of the Raf fellows. Just two questions. One, is the Secretary General concerned about the fighting in Ye County in South Sudan between Riek Mashar's soldiers and uh, Dr. Uh, Salva Q, um, just after signing the peace deal, um, just one. And then two, um, I also wanted to get a comment about the Secretary General's thoughts on uh, the situation in Uganda where the opposition has been persecuted and journalists beaten and um, one of um, the opposition heads tortured. Uh, we have spoken previously on the situation in Uganda and our comments already stated stand. On uh, Ye County, yes, we are concerned, as uh, you may have seen. There was also shooting towards a peacekeeper who was wounded. Uh, I think it's very important uh, that the leaders lead by example and ensure that all those on the ground implement and respect uh, the peace agreement for the sake of the people of South Sudan, who I think all would agree have suffered enough. Seth, maybe for the record, please, can you tell Rieko about the... Secretary General's comment on Uganda, just for the record for me. I think this is something we have, uh, we have followed closely. It is important that uh, people have the right uh, to demonstrate uh, peacefully, that they demonstrate peacefully, uh, and that a space be accorded to them. Yes, sir. Uh, are the murders of the UN experts, Saida Catalan and Michael Sharp, going to be addressed in any ways during these um, weeks of the General Assembly? Uh, there have been regular reporting uh, by uh, the Secretary General's, uh, the, the man the Secretary General, Mr. Petit, has, um, has appointed to lead the investigation. It may come up in some of the bilaterals. I think we have to wait for those bilaterals to, uh, to take place. Uh, it is important that the authorities in the Democratic Republic of the Congo conduct full uh, investigation and find those who are responsible for the, kill, for the killing of our two colleagues who were doing the work of the Security Council, who were, um, I think, personally dedicated to their work, uh, that the truth be, uh, be found, that those responsible be brought to justice. Uh, there has been a follow-up mechanism that uh, was uh, cleared by the Security Council, the Secretary General has implemented, uh, trying to help the DRC authorities but it is uh, their responsibility to lead that investigation. Go back to Nigeria, and then we'll come back to you. Thank you. One of the aid workers abducted by Boko Haram in March was killed last night. And though that followed after several months of uh, threats by Boko Haram that they are going to be killed if the government did not accede to their demands. Is there any effort that the UN is making to ensure the release of uh, the remaining two workers? Obviously, the safety of all the humanitarian workers is high on our agenda in Nigeria. Uh, for reasons you may want, you, you would understand, we're not going to speak publicly as to what may or may not be going on on that front. We extend our condolences and our solidarity to our colleagues at the International uh, Committee for the Red Cross, uh, whose, colleagues were kill whose colleague was killed uh, by Boko Haram. Yes, Jordan. Thank you. Um, your statement yesterday about what the SG yeah. that he had spoken to the leadership of Saudi Arabia uh, on UNRWA, the Palestinian Refugee Agency, UN Palestinian Refugee Agency. And then um, I'm sure he spoke about financing. Did he get any reply that if they were willing to support, this is one. The second, some uh, countries um, trying to um, organize a summit or a meeting uh, during the GA on UNRWA financing. Is the SG going to attend? Is he going to appeal to countries during? I think the, the conversations, uh, the issue of, of uh, UNRWA came up in the conversations uh, with the King of Saudi Arabia. Uh, as always, it is important uh, with all pledges uh, in the end to what money is produced or so where our colleagues at UNRWA are counting the money as it comes in. They still face a very important shortfall. Uh, as you know, the Commissioner General opened up the schools, uh, but without the money to go through the school year. 
So it is desperate that we need uh, that we need those. We desperately need the funds, uh, the funds required. Um, I will check if there is an UNRWA uh, event. The Secretary General, as you know, has participated in pledging conference both in New York and in Rome, and on various occasions, just like in Saudi Arabia, has raised the issue directly with heads of states and has also spent quite a time on the phone speaking to various leaders. Money, emergency money, like to give in Iran because the commissioner keep saying if we don't get, for example, a hundred million dollar by the end of the year, we might go close the school or something like. This is the UN agency. It's not a Jordanian, Palestinian, Iraqi, Syrian agency. It's United Nations agency. The financing of it is should be somehow. I know the voluntary responsibility of the member state, but. Does the UN have money, like in case of we well, come there is, to, you know, the, there is no, a, just a, yeah, like, does the UN have like money, like stop talking, commissioner, and we have money, don't worry about the school, or, you know, in, like in, no, in we, many we, camps we, in Jordan and in Palestinian territories, they are afraid that they will lose their school because too many statements issued by everybody about there is a fear we might close the school. Does the UN have money? Of course. Cover? I mean, we, we fully realize uh, the dangers of running out of money. The vast majority of the UN's humanitarian work is based on voluntary contribution, almost pay as you go. And, you know, we talk about this repeatedly. Our humanitarian appeals are chronically, most of them are chronically underfunded. The UN does not sit on a stash of money that it can just dole out. I mean, the money comes from member states and then it goes out. Uh, there is a central emergency fund, which we, the Secretary General, sometimes uses to kickstart uh, emergencies. Uh, but even that would not cover uh, would not cover the um, the needs of UNRWA. What is important uh, is that member states that have made pledges translate those pledges into actual contributions, and that those who have yet to contribute to UNRWA do so. Madam. Yeah, my name is Laura Carpineta from Telam News Agency in Argentina. Is the Secretary General going to discuss with Latin American leaders next week the situation of Venezuelan refugees uh, in neighboring countries? I expect that the, the regional implication of uh, the movement of uh, people we have seen from Venezuela into other Latin American countries will come up in a number of discussions. Yes, sir. Uh, I need you to press, make, uh, no, you, there's a button on your microphone. Nasal Westme from the National Newspaper, uh, part of the RAF Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Wanted to ask, is there any update on the situation in Yemen following the Houthis no-show in Geneva talks earlier this month? The, the update is that Martin Griffiths, the envoy, uh, is in Sana, I believe, uh, today, then making his way to Riyadh. Uh, he was in Sana to speak. Uh, with the Houthi leadership, then going to Riyadh. Um, the talks ended as we know. Uh, Mr. Griffiths is not giving up uh, and will continue his round of diplomatic talks to try to bring the parties to the table. Almost every day uh, here, we highlight the horrific situation of the civilian population in Yemen, uh, which keeps suffering every day through a man-made disaster. Uh, where civilian infrastructures were, were hit, civilians were targeted. Uh, the health system in Yemen has taken a huge uh, hit. We have our challenges in getting humanitarian aid in. The only solution is a political one for all the parties to meet with Mr. Griffiths around the same table. Yes, madam. Afrah Nasser, a journalist from Yemen, and I'm also one of the Dark Hammerholt uh, fellows. Welcome. Thank you. Um, following up on Yemen as well, uh, since uh, there is a halt in the negotiation uh, process, is there any um, uh, pledging conferences that are supposed to happen during uh, these uh, the UN uh, general uh, There assembly? will be meetings. Uh, I will check, but I believe there will be some meetings on, uh, on Yemen uh, during the General Assembly. Th the negotiation process... Didn't, in terms of what happened in Geneva did not go the way we wanted. But the work of Mr. Griffiths, his, the Secretary General Envoy, has not stopped and will not stop. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, hi, I'm Noelia from Nicaragua. Um, the Secretary General has encouraged uh, Nicaraguan actors to retake the national dialogue, uh, but the government has stated recently um, through different interviews that the President Ortega has given that it failed and they won't retake it. Um, so what are the thoughts of the Secretary General about it? Uh, the Secretary General's position is unchanged. I know he has discussed this issue directly with the leadership in Nicaragua. Yes. Hi, I'm Eltaf. I'm part of the Iraq fellowship. I came from Afghanistan. Uh, well, uh, Afghanistan's situation is getting worse day by day by the Taliban and other mm -hmm. uh, terrorist groups in Afghanistan. So, and the UN is keep saying that only the political dialogue is the solution with the Taliban people. So, do you confirm that the UN is in contact with the Taliban or the Taliban is in contact with the United Nations? And will, will that political dialogue eventually happen to end this war? You know, I wish we could tell you when the dialogue will, will happen. I would refer you to Mr. Yamamoto's uh, pre-comprehensive briefing to the Security Council yesterday. Sylviane, and then uh, we'll leave it to Lise Congo. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Is there any side event during the General Assembly on uh, the CEDR, CEDR conference? We will, we're working on putting together all the, the list of side events. We should have something to be able to share with you uh, probably tomorrow or, or Thursday, if not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.